tying the same number of W's they had last year in 54 with four to spare in the 82 game grind. Two-time champion Contavious Caldwell Pope's game high 24 points on 100% true shooting. Nikola Jokic's 25th triple double of the season. Peyton Watson swatting a career high five blocks while combining with Reggie Jackson plus Justin Holiday for 39 off the bench. And Jamal Murray returning after missing seven games due to knee inflammation to drop 16 and six in just 21 minutes secured our league's reigning champions the first seed in the Western Conference. The NBA's best, albeit most scrutinized player who's been labeled the worst MVP in 40 years by Gilbert Arenas under a take no BS system from coach Mike Malone will likely win the Denver Nuggets a consecutive title. But that only applies if they're at full strength. That said, Jamal Murray's knee injury doesn't seem to have lingered while Aaron Gordon's right foot sprains considered minor. We all know how deadly Murray becomes once the playoffs hit, so given he just displayed to be in good condition, the Denver Nuggets vibes have maxed out and it's frightening. But just 13.3% of my audience is subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you kindly as I appreciate your support back to the content. Following up an L to a Los Angeles team without Kawhi, minus Murray themselves, Jamal's return gave the state of Colorado much better basketball to watch. Whether the Blue Arrow was initiating offense himself or not, his presence by itself in terms of the floor spacer along with elite passing and scoring threat that he is, made things night and day easier for Denver in a bounce back obliteration of an Atlanta Hawks team without Trey Young. That said, the underrated shot creation from KCP got things cooking. The Pope would snap Boyan Bogdanovich's ankles off a Jokic ball screen with this nasty double hezzy tween combo, forcing Bogey's legs to collapse from underneath him. Davies Caldwell Pope as Bogdan Bogdanovich uh, slid. Jokic sets a flare for Contavious before setting this empty side ball screen for Murray, whose take draws the attention of all five Hawk defenders, before he mid-air two-hand overheads it to Porter Jr. for the catch and shoot under duress of a tough Hunter closeout. Kansas product and back-to-back -back NCAA and NBA champion Christian Browns nearly doubled his scoring average as a sophomore, and we get an idea of Christian's improved feel for the game as well as balance when Christian caps off a coast-to-coast -coast attack with this nifty Euro around bogey. This Spinulis action sees Murray first set a flare for Brown before popping to the top of the arc for the Jokic DHO. And with DeJounte Murray a step slow, it's practically a wide open Jamal Murray 3. Porter Jr. is going to hustle hard to track down DeJounte Murray and force a miss around the basket. And when Pope outlets to Jokic, we see Nikola continue to make Stephen A. Smith eat these words. Flashback. Here's my counter to that. Jokic isn't known for having some kind of dominant post game. That's not his game. End of flashback. As a transition to the post with the tweens, followed up with a beastly drop step on Capella to open up a highly floating post hook. With KCP creating, the Hawks switch this Jamal slip screen, but DeJounte doesn't see Jokic's second pick coming, that or he doesn't know Pope can shoot off the dribble, as he goes under Nikola's pick, allowing an open KCP release from distance. This right here is a bit of a wild entry from Murray in transition, but he realizes that right off the bat by following his pass, while Joker saves it from going out of bounds by deflecting the pass off the rim, and Jamal's then right there to save his own turnover, in turn getting a layup around beat Krejci out of it. Crazy play. When he grabs this board, Jokic casually makes a ridiculously difficult outlet over eight players to find Justin Holiday cherry picking, touchdown Broncos, scratch that, Nuggets. From the first year Nugget and Holiday, this is exceptional pick and roll defense to switch on to Bogey, then predict and knock away the Jalen Johnson entry. A Zeke Naji screen and roll with Julian Strother sees Julian intelligently 180 out of a drive that was enough to collapse the Bogey pressure. And with Bogdan sagging, this frees up the kick to Holiday for a catch and shoot. Holiday DHO to Jackson leads into the 13 year veteran and Reggie getting a Zeke Naji stagger, then making a big time take through the lane over Cap Capella, Jackson seems to still have it. That was further displayed the next Nuggets possession, where Capella's far too low after switching, allowing Reggie to pull up for three of his off-the-bench game high of 18. This beautiful wraparound dish from Justin Holiday splits Capella and Krejci for a crazy connection to Najee. One of five monster swats from a sophomore in P 
Swatson, where he cleanly funnels DeJounte to the basket and meets him at the rim, triggers a fast break where Strother outlets to Holiday, who finds Julian as the trailer and ghosts a screen for him, and Julian knocks it down. At the back end of a shot clock, there's about nothing else in the league any team would want more than a Murray Jokic two-man game, which in this case leeways a Kobe-esque fading midi from Murray. This time, it's Murray attacking on the catch of a Jokic kickout by driving baseline and collapsing the defense before midair fake passing to Porter at the arc, and instead finding Peyton in the dunker spot. The league's deadliest pick and pop features a Murray behind the back to the arc kickout, where Jokic surveys with a few pass fakes, then also fakes a drive entry, which catches Bogey in no man's land, freeing up a swing to Pope. As Caldwell Pope for three and he nails it. Murray attacks this Capella drop cover by simply levitating, and just as he's in the midst of landing, Jalen Johnson rotates off Watson down low, and Jamal finds the angle for this funky but effective bounce entry to P. Watt. Hezzy simultaneous moving jab combo from Murray's going to get bogey guessing drive, allowing Jamal to cleanly release a Curry-like pull-up triple where he gets a friendly roll. Murray gets back to connecting with Jokic in the pick and pop, as another behind the back kick leads to Nikola pump faking to get Capella jumping, then drawing three hawks and spotting Porter Jr. in the corner. Porter for three. Nails it. Zero post-game Jokic, according to Stephen A. Smith, is going to fake this handoff to Murray in the corner, enter a high back down. She bounced it. She bounced it. She bounced again. Then utilize a Dirk fader on the baseline. The Hawks expect another Murray behind the back dish out of this pick and pop, as Capel is hesitant to fully commit to Murray at the rim, however is still roaming in the vicinity to foul Jamal anyway, despite barely contesting. Jokic then spots Murray just after he crosses half, Jamal gets a screen from Porter, and Hezzy's into a deadly step back to shed bogey. On the other side, Murray's going to shock Jalen Johnson with a rejection, setting up a swing-swing with Jokic finding Porter, who finds Caldwell Pope, and Contavious gets a 2019 Eastern Conference Semis Kawhi roll. The Denver Nuggets went just 4-3 and three in their second option, Jamal Murray's absence with a knee injury. Next to Nikola Jokic, having that second player on the roster who has a first-class and dominant combination of skill and IQ back in the fold allowed Denver to pull off their third big blowout win of the 23-24 season with a 32-point runaway over the Atlanta Hawks at Ball Arena on Saturday night. This was an evening where the 27-year-old from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, Jamal Murray, surpassed franchise legend and two-time All-Star Fat Lever to move into eighth all-time among Nugget franchise scoring leaders. Murray's known for his offense, and while he is shooting a career high in what's an NBA 15th best, 41.9% on three-pointers, he's also clamping up defense among players who've defended at least 200 shots. According to Extramuse, Murray's holding attackers to just 41.2% shooting from the field, which is the fourth best defended field goal percentage among all 450 players since the All-Star break. I want to know what's the most deadly part about the reigning champions in your opinion. Best answer gets a commenter shout out next video. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by June 21st earn free merch. Today's shout out goes to Tim Edits, who says, I believe if the Warriors don't lose tomorrow against the Mavs, I think they'll win out, but will have a shocking loss in the first play-in game. Dubs did take a close L to the Mavs, Tim, but we'll see what happens in terms of that play-in prediction. Thank you for that take, Tim. Thank you for watching. Your boy DFlow signing off, and I'll see you next video.